Hello everyone, my name is Oren from CompuMatter and today I have a generalized tutorial on installing Ubuntu Linux. For this you're going to need a USB stick, 12 gigabytes is recommended. Um, you're going to want to make sure no data is on here anymore or if there is, move it off, back it up, whatever you prefer because this will be deleted in order to install Ubuntu Linux. So the first thing you'll need to do is after you get a USB stick, you will have to have a computer that is currently working that's running either Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And this tutorial is going to go a step by step guide on each of those. You're welcome to skip to whichever one is applicable to you. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, if you're using a Windows machine, go ahead and open up your preferred browser. In this case, I'm using Firefox and type in Rufus. It'll be this link right here and click on that. That's rufus.ie. From here, you can scroll down after reading through all of their fancy website. And there will be a download link that you can click on. I'd recommend getting the latest version. And once you've got the latest version downloaded on your preferred browser, you can verify it's completed by opening your downloads folder which I can see right here. The next thing we'll need to get from here is Ubuntu Linux ISO. So I'm going to type in Ubuntu on my browser again, navigate to ubuntu.com, and I'll get a little pop-up about tracker settings. I personally don't really mind, so I'm just going to accept all. There will be a drop-down menu right here at the top, that when you click on that, on the left there will be Get Ubuntu Desktop. I'm going to get the 22.04.3 LTS edition by clicking the download button here. If it gives this message, you are welcome to check around, make sure that it's actually starting the download. If not, that's what that button's there for. This process will take a long time since it's a decent sized file. All right, from there, you have both files and we're ready to launch Rufus. You'll need to click yes to give Rufus administrator permissions, and you'll also need an empty USB stick plugged in at this point, or a USB stick that you don't care about the data on. So I'm plugging that in. Alright, the one I've got is a 16 gigabyte drive. From here I will click the select button to choose the Ubuntu ISO that we will be installing. All right, and now I can see the boot selection is set to the Ubuntu ISO. And I can also change the name of the volume label to whatever I'd like in here just for easier recognition, but everything else I'd recommend keeping at the default settings. When you're ready, go ahead and click the start button to start the process. It'll ask if you'd like to write in ISO image mode or DD image mode. It's recommended to stick with ISO, so I'm just going to click the OK button from here. Now, I needed to get some additional content in order for this to work properly, so if you get this pop-up, just click yes, and it will proceed to download everything else that it needs to go through this okay. This is your final warning to make sure there's nothing on this USB stick that is important because it will be erased when you click okay. This will take approximately five to 10 minutes depending on your computer's hardware and everything else, so feel free to wait patiently and it will let you know when it's ready with this lovely green ready button, which you can actually press. So go ahead and click close. From here, you can right click on your USB drive and click eject to safely remove it from the computer. And it's on to the next step. If you're a Mac user, feel free to open your preferred browser, Safari, Firefox, or otherwise, and type in Balina Etcher. Make sure it's from this website, etcher.balina.io. Then click Download Etcher to scroll the page down to their downloads area. We'll be getting the one for Mac OS, so go ahead and click the download link on there. You'll want to allow downloads from this website. Alright, the process has started. So when that's finished, go ahead and double click on it to open, either there or go to your downloads at the bottom and click on it to open it up. We'll need to drag and drop it into your applications folder. So dragging and dropping, and it will go through the installation process real quick. When it's done, 
you can go to your applications folder, double click on it, and it should open right up for you. So it'll warn you that it's an app downloaded from the internet. You'll click open. And from there, we're ready to get the ISO file. And we no longer need this file, so I'm going to eject that. From here, you'll need to open your browser again and navigate to Ubuntu's website, which you can find by typing in Ubuntu or Ubuntu Linux. Make sure this is the website URL you're clicking on. I'm just going to accept all for the cookies and trackers. And there will be a drop down menu up here on the top that looks like a download. When you click on that, you'll see Ubuntu Desktop on the left. Go ahead and click that button. From here, you can scroll down and get your preferred latest version. I'm going to go ahead and get the 22.04.3 LTS edition with this big green button right here. This download will take some time as it's a pretty large ISO file. You also need to allow downloads from this website. Just speeding up this process for viewing sake. All right, now that Bailina Etcher is installed and we have the Ubuntu ISO, we're ready to plug in the USB stick and get that started. I'm gonna close down the browser and we're back here at Bailina Etcher. All right, and I have a USB stick plugged in down there on the left and I'm going to open up the Ubuntu ISO in my downloads folder. and then it'll ask me to select a target. So I'll select the USB stick, make sure there's no important data on this device because it will be wiped out during this process. Make sure not to click anything in the hidden area either as that's operating system files. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click the flash button. It will require your admin password in order to go through with this process and it will need access to your removable drive. All right, when you get the message that it's completed, you can remove the USB stick and get ready to install Ubuntu on your device. This example is going to be on Ubuntu Linux. I'm gonna open up a browser here. This example, we're using Firefox. I'm gonna type in Bailina Etcher. This is the program we're gonna use, which was etcher.bailina.io. From here, you can click the green download Etcher button and it will pull you down here. And I'm just gonna get the 64-bit app image with this blue download button. This should download pretty quickly depending on your internet speed. Then the next thing we'll need is Ubuntu, which you can find at ubuntu.com. Go ahead and click on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and accept all the cookies here. There's gonna be a download drop-down menu here at the top bar that you can click on and get Ubuntu desktop in green on the left. From there, scroll down and get your preferred version. I'm gonna get Ubuntu 22.04.3 LTS with this green download button here. This download is gonna take a lot longer than the previous one. All right, and when those are both finished downloading, you're ready to go on to the next step. So from here, you're gonna need to open the terminal application, which you can find by going to the bottom left of your screen and clicking there to access all of your apps. You can either click here if you see it in the list or you can type terminal in this search bar here. I'm gonna to have to right click and do a new window since I'm already using a terminal, but you can just normal click on it. From here, feel free to type in the command sudo apt update and hit enter. It'll prompt you for the password, which when you're typing it in, you won't be able to see. Then hit enter and it will go ahead and download everything. From here, you'll need to type in sudo apt upgrade and hit the enter key again. It'll ask you if you'd like to continue, type in Y and then hit enter. All 
This will make sure everything's up to date. From here, you'll need to get libviews2, which is the command sudo apt install libviews2. Once you've typed all of that into the terminal, feel free to hit enter. And this is required to open up the Belina Etcher program. All right, now you can navigate back to your downloads folder now that that's all installed. Now before we open it up, I would recommend right clicking on it and going to properties. You might need to unzip it if it came in a zip file format. When you open the properties, click on the permissions tab and make sure this is check marked. All right, and once that's checked, feel free to close the box and you can double click the app image to open it. The first time I double clicked it, it took a moment to launch. Now that this is working, you can plug in a USB stick to your computer. Make sure it doesn't have any important data on it. Click the flash from file button and navigate to your downloads folder. Go ahead and click the green open button once you have your ISO file selected. Then it will ask you to select your target, which in this case is going to be my USB stick. And hit the blue select button. And finally, the big blue flash button. It'll need your login password in order to allow it to do its job. All right, when you get this message flash completed, that means you can remove the USB stick from the computer and use it to install or reinstall Ubuntu Linux on another machine. So go ahead and remove that and we're on to the next step. Okay, so however you had to do it, we're now here with our Ubuntu Linux installation media. So I'm using this computer as an example and plugging in the USB stick. The way you do this slightly varies based on the model of computer you're attempting to boot to. Shown on screen are the most common boot keys by brand. You can also look up your model online and look up boot key associated with it to find the exact one. So what you're going to want to do is spam press the key once you figure out which one it's probably going to be. So you press the power button briefly and then I'm going to spam the F9 key as it's the key needed for this HP model. And it loads up the boot menu. Now, if you do not see your USB stick in this list, please read the top right as there might be a number of things that could have caused that. But if you do see this and you do see the USB stick in the list, you're going to want to use your arrow keys to navigate down to it. <laughs> and then go ahead and click the enter key once you have it selected. From here, you will see try or install Ubuntu, which is the top option. I'm just gonna hit enter key again to go into that menu. From here, this might take a long time to initially load up, but once it does, you will see a menu that pops up that will say try or install Ubuntu. This is a great tool if you want to use try Ubuntu first to make sure you like it, but otherwise for this tutorial, we're just going to go straight into installing. Use your preferred keyboard layout here, then click continue. You can log in with your Wi-Fi, which is recommended because it installs some updates during this process and saves you time later on. So prompt you for your password, go ahead and enter that in, then hit the connect button, and then continue. So unless your system is very low spec, I would recommend just sticking with the normal installation. If you need any third party software, you can also check that box, but otherwise I'm just gonna continue on with this button. And you can choose to dual boot with this top button alongside Windows if you'd like or you can erase the entire disk, including all of your data, programs, documents, and photos, and install Linux on top of it. Make sure you've backed up everything before going through this process, because it will wipe it out permanently. So once you've made your selection, click Install Now. This is the final warning. It's letting you know which partition changes are going to be in effect. Make sure you check on that. And go ahead and continue on. It'll ask for your time zone. 
And then I'm gonna fill out my name as well as the computer's preferred name and username, password, etc., and continue on. Now it says the installation is complete. You can hit the restart now button to finish it and get it booted into Linux. It'll tell you to remove the USB stick or installation medium and then press the enter key though before you do that. All right, now just log in with the password that you created during the setup process. Then hit the enter key when you're done typing it in and it will boot right into Linux. It'll ask if you want to connect your online accounts like Microsoft, Nextcloud, or Google, but I do not want to do that, so I'm just gonna skip that. Most users don't need live patch, so I'm gonna skip through that too. And you can choose whether you want to send your system info to Canonical, or you can choose if you want your location services to be on. It is also recommended before you do anything to fully update the system. So I'm gonna to go to the show applications area, type in update, and click on the software update button. Make sure you have an internet connection and it will be able to find the latest software. You'll have to click install now and it should prompt you for a password, which you'll put in your login password and then click the authenticate button. finished up, so I'm going to restart the computer, put in the password one more time, and then I'd recommend just repeating this process over and over until you no longer get the pop-up to install more updates. I only had to do this once before I got the software on this computer is up to date. All set. That's all for this generalized tutorial on installing Ubuntu Linux on a variety of different types of machines. If you're running into any difficulty on particularly a MacBook or an iMac, we do have specific tutorial videos on both of those that I'll link below in the description. If you run into any other difficulties during this process, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll do our best to assist you in that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.